I'm gonna go back to object mode. Now, next let's add some textures to this. So a good place to get textures from is sharetextures.com. Let's first get, well, we'll look at our reference and we'll see that there's a lot of kind of moss going on here. So let's try find maybe a grass or something that we can use, or maybe even just moss. Let's see. No, let's, uh, let's got bricks. We don't want bricks. So I'm going to type grass. Uh, we're taking this one. Uh, oh, or, or, so if you don't find one on that you like on sharetextures.com, another resource would be uh, polyhaven.com. Polyhaven have HDRIs and 3D assets as well as textures. So let's browse their textures. Uh, let's type grass. We've got a few other options here. So forest ground, ooh, perfect. Let's use that. So I'm gonna take that. I don't really need 4K. We're, we're, we're gonna be viewing this. Uh, scene from kind of up here. So we really don't need 4K textures. Uh, we'll be fine with 2K. So I'm going to download that. It's always good to be smart with your folder. So I'm going to add a textures folder in here. I'm going to move that in. And I'm just going to extract it here. Okay, we don't need the blender file. We just need these. So I'm going to copy that path. And then in blender, I'm going to go over to shading. I'm going to create a new material. We'll call this forest ground. Now we've got our shader editor down here and I am going to make sure I have no drangler turned on, which gives us a lot of useful shortcuts down here. So I'm going to go edit preferences, add-ons. I just need to search that we've got no drangler turned on. Node wrangler. Yep. It's turned on. Make sure you have this checked on so we get a lot of useful shortcuts. Now with a uh, principal BSDF shader selected, I can press Control Shift T and then we load up images that we want to use. So I'm just gonna press A here to select them all. Principal texture set, it's gonna automatically hook them all up, which is great. Um, it doesn't look too good here, but we're gonna use a different material at that point. Obviously we can see that this texture is a bit too big. There's a few ways we could change it. We could either change the UV map or we could change the texture. I'm gonna change the texture because I find it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna press Shift A, search, and look for a value node. This value node just brings in a number that we can change. And we're gonna pump this value node into the scale here, which is gonna control all of these textures, which is driving the material. So I'm going to put that into there, into the scale. And now I can change this value to change the scale of this texture. So maybe something about that scale. Now at this point, because we're trying to judge something with scale, it's always good to have a reference character in here. No matter what you're building or making in 3D, especially if it's an environment or a building that needs scale, just having a reference image of a human really helps your brain figure out the right scale and size. So I'm gonna to go to Mixamo.com. This is where Adobe brought Mixamo quite a while ago. I think this is actually free as well. You don't even need a paid Adobe account. And you can download characters in animations. It's, it's super, super useful. So I just searched for mannequin and I'm just gonna use this mannequin character because it's kind of generic. You could use whatever you want. It kind of works for you for scale. I'm gonna load in an anim animation for him just so he's not in a, a T-pose. I'm gonna make him do something a bit more uh, idle. So I'm just gonna search for idle and I'm gonna get an ad idle animation, breathing, it doesn't matter. Just so he's standing in a kind of relaxed position. I'll just choose this one. Okay, uh, I'm gonna download it. This is all fine. Now to put him into Blender, I'm gonna go file, import, FBX, because that was the file format. Locate where I downloaded it. I'm gonna load in the animation as well. Import, and you'll see, there he is. So I'm just gonna move him over to here, just somewhere in the scene. So I can get a sense for the scale that we're working with. So this is actually quite a big scene. So I'm just gonna place him somewhere where he could be standing. So we can now kind of go in closer to his feet and see that maybe this could just be a little bit smaller, like that, maybe, and that should be good. 